Hello, I'm Andy Stevenson, and welcome to episode three of A Winning Mindset Lessons from the Paralympics, a new podcast brought to you by the International Paralympic Committee and long standing partner Allianz. In our first two programs, I hope you enjoyed listening to British sprinter Johnny Peacock and American wheelchair racer Tatiana McFadden. I'm sure there were things they said that have stayed with you, attitudes and techniques perhaps that they've used to overcome difficult times and achieve their goals. And this episode should be just as eye-opening. Greg Polychronidis from Greece is one of the best players in the world at the Paralympic sport of boccia. He has an impressive medal collection, but his climb towards a first individual gold medal took heart, the love of his family, and an amazing ability to recover from setbacks and disappointment. Let's hear from Greg now. So Greg, it's great to speak to you today. Thanks for sparing the time for us. Now, you have spinal muscular atrophy. Can you tell us about that condition and how it affects your life? So spinal muscular atrophy is a disability that affects uh, all four limbs and I have a very limited movement in my uh, arms and in my legs. It's from the day that I was born and each year it becomes uh, worse. So uh, it, it sounds like a very bad condition, but uh, I have learned in my life to overcome every obstacles. And uh, this is one of the major obstacles that I have. But even though I do my best to live my life in the way that I like. Is there some strange advantage in a way of being born with a disability in that you grow up and you learn to do things just like any other child would, but just in slightly different ways? Yes, I believe that it makes you stronger because from a very, very small age, from being a child, you, you have in mind that you have to struggle in your life, that you have a, a weak point and you have to make some other points that you will be much stronger in order to have a normal life. And that is what I did. I remember my mother telling me when I was a child that, uh, Greg, you must be strong and you must learn things. You must have a good education so you can live a normal life. And that's what I did. I always say to others, never be disappointed. Just find your strong points and work on them. And then you will accomplish great things. And you've certainly found your strong point, which we'll talk about in, in more detail in a few moments time. So let's talk about boccia. If you had to explain the sport to someone who's never seen it, Greg, uh, how would you describe it? Boccia is a game of, of tactics and uh, concentration. And it requires a lot of thinking. It's something between chess and billiard. When I say chess, because you have to think about the next movements that you will make and all your tactics. And billiard because of the way that the balls can move during a match. For me, it's, uh, it's the best thing that I could do in my life. I will always promote this sport in every way that I will be possible. The other thing about boccia is it is a specifically Paralympic sport. There is no Olympic equivalent. So the Paralympics takes great pride in boccia. And it's also a sport for people like yourself who I think ordinary people, people listening to this would, would consider you to have what they might describe as a severe impairment. What I remember is you see the athletes come out and sometimes because of their conditions, their bodies are making quite involuntary movements. And then when it gets to the moment that they roll their ball, they somehow manage to just control all of that and roll the ball perfectly. Well, the Paralympic Games has to give the opportunity for everyone to compete. That's the spirit. Boccia is uh, the sport for the severe impairments, as you said before. And the great thing about it is that in Boccia, even a person with a very severe disability and very limited movement can play against an absolutely healthy man and he can win because it's a strategy game. And uh, especially in my category where uh, I cannot throw the ball with my hand, and because of your spinal muscular atrophy, you use special equipment, don't you, to play? You use the ramp, you use headgear to set the balls in motion down the ramp. Is it true, by the way, that your dad made all of your boccia ramps with your name on? Yeah, yeah, that is true. And this is from the very beginning. And I'm really proud and happy that I had the luck to have my, my father make all this equipment, which is uh, one of the best equipment in the world. So uh, it was... Uh, my advantage for all this year 
to have the manufacturer inside my house. It has to be said, you uh, you use special people as well. Now, your assistant is, is your wife, who we will get onto in a moment, but it used to be your father. So how nice was it to have your dad right there by your side in the early years? It was great. We played together for uh, a lot of years and we have won a gold Paralympic medal. Now it's even better. I'm competing with my wife. I have to add something that the sport assistant that we are competing with, he's also considered as an athlete because we train all the time together and because uh, the role of the sport assistant is very, very significant. We have a limited time during the game and we must have the best communication possible. For example, uh, I can say a word to my sport assistant and the sport assistant must understand 10 actions because I, I, I have to have my mind inside the game and I cannot lose time explaining to the sport assistant. And the sport assistant cannot speak and cannot look inside the court. All the actions are going from my orders to the sport assistant who makes them happen. That's a very unique relationship in sport, isn't it? I, I can't, sat here, I can't think of too many other examples of sport where there is such a close, important relationship like that between two people. As you mentioned, your fiancé at the time, now wife Katerina, took over as your assistant. So how did the dynamic change between working with your dad to now working with your, your wife? Yeah, well, actually, Katerina was uh, an athlete. Uh, she was playing tennis and rhythmic gymnastics. So she's a sports person. I think it was for the benefit of my game because we managed to make our game even faster and save more time. It's something special. It's something magnificent. It's something wonderful. It's a sport that every person that sees it, that has the opportunity to watch a game, I believe he or she loves it from the first game. And I'm really, very really happy that I'm a bocce athlete and that I have accomplished great achievements. And most I'm happy because I have motivated a lot of children and uh, persons to start playing bocce. And this is something magnificent. As a Paralympic athlete, you're in a unique position, aren't you, Greg, to, to motivate and influence people. And I know you've spoken a number of times to Allianz employees, for example, in Greece. Yeah, I did. Do you enjoy that ambassador role? It was great. My relationship with Allianz was great. I was asked to speak about my career at a conference. I explained from the very beginning of my life all that I have come through. In Allianz, they were very happy about listening about my life and were very motivated. So they, they told me that we will follow you for the rest of your career. We just want to support you in every way that, you, that we can so you can get more achievements and you can motivate people. And when we have uh, national championships, uh, we have always people from Allianz and uh, their children and we do whatever we can in order to motivate people and to show them that the Paralympic sports are magnificent and that it's a great, a great thing to follow it and to become a part of it. I mean, I know you're a modest guy, Greg, so you might sort of shudder when I say this to you, but what specifically did you feel you were teaching those people beyond just playing boccia? What was it that they were taking from you? What, what do you think it is that people listening to this will be taking from what you're saying? The most important thing was to never give up. First of all, because of the disability, because uh, they could see I almost cannot move at all and uh, I do what I do. This needs a lot of emotional strength and this is something that motivates them. And then when I said about my career and about my, uh, my setbacks and everything, that I don't give up when a failure comes, but what I do is that I try to become stronger and win my next challenge. I believe this is something that touched them. How do you feel about the word inspirational? Do you, do you like being called inspirational or does it make you feel uncomfortable at all? I would love to. I would love to be inspirational. I don't know exactly how much have I affected other, others' lives, but definitely that would be a great honor to me 
to know that I am inspirational. What I know, what I remember, is that in uh, 2007, if I'm not mistaken, I was in a, in a different city of Greece, and uh, I was presenting Boccia. There were a lot of people watching, and then uh, a guy, he started playing Boccia, and he was very good. And in some years, he managed to win a silver European medal at the European Championships. And his whole life changed because of that. And that was one moment that I felt inspirational and I felt very happy about it. When you do something, if you don't change other lives, it does not have the same value. But when you win a medal and with this medal, you can affect others and make their lives better, then it's, it is just like a blessing. I just want to take you back to uh, the Paralympics and right back to 2004, uh, your first Paralympics yeah. in your home country, in Athens, in Greece. How special was that representing your country? It was amazing. It was like a, a dream come true. First of all, the real reason that I started playing Boccia was the fact that the Paralympic Games would be held in Athens. The timing was not really good because I was studying uh, economics and finance. So I started working in a, one of the biggest companies in Greece. So I had a lot of uh, career opportunities at that time. But uh, the dream to participate in the Paralympic Games that would be held in my home city, which would never be again, uh, at least in my life, was uh, a dream for me. It became my first priority. So I did the best I could together with my father and my godfather. But uh, it was very early for us because I had only competed in one international competition before the Paralympic Games. So I, I did not have any experience at all. And I was not ready to fight against great competitors. Even though in my first international competition, I finished 37th. And that was uh, in 2003. And just a few months later, in 2004 in the Paralympic Games, I managed to finish sixth. So this huge step from 37th to sixth was like saying to me that you can do it. So don't stop now. Just give all you have to become better. Just after I finished uh, university in 2005, my father also stopped working at the company where he was working. And uh, we concentrated only on Boccia. And that paid off in the next year. Because in 2006, first medal, the medal I told you before, the silver medal in the World Championships. And then together, my father and I, we said, yeah, that was a good decision. We had to concentrate on Boccia. And only with absolute concentration, we can achieve major achievements. And I'm really happy for this decision because uh, I cannot imagine myself being first in the world in somewhere else. But in Boccia, I managed it. And I managed also to change the lives of many, to motivate them to start a sport and to be more active in their life. And I feel very, very happy about it. Did the Athens Paralympics change anything for people with disabilities in Greece? Yeah, it was the best that could happen for Athens because the accessibility in the city changed a lot. First of all, we have one of the most accessible subways. We have a lot of ramps on the streets that were made all at the time before Paralympic Games. Many buses now have ramps. Before Paralympic Games, uh, the city of Athens was not accessible at all. We fight, we struggle here, all the Paralympic movement and the movement of uh, disability to continue to build accessible buildings and to have accessibility uh, in the city. And not only Athens, but in the whole Greece. On paper, your Paralympic career has been... Excellent. One gold, two silvers and one bronze. 
but I know there have been some huge disappointments and near misses along the way too. Uh, how do you view those silver and bronze medals in particular? Are they successes still or are they failures? I will tell you, all Paralympic medals are successes because the competition in Boccia is so strong that uh, the fact that you're on the podium, you must feel very, very happy and lucky and satisfied. Though, when you are struggling and doing all the best that you can do for four years, and then you lose the final game at the Paralympic Games, it is like someone is killing you with the most torturing way. And I felt that, first of all, in Beijing in 2008. I was first in the world ranking list. I had already been in two finals in 2006 in the World Championships final, where I lost. And then in 2007, the major competition was the World Cup, where I lost again. And then I had the third final in the Paralympic Games in, the Beijing, in Beijing. The match is uh, consisting of four ends. So we start the first end. And I do a very bad technical mistake, which cost me that I lost two points. And then I manage and I do the score 2-2, two, two, so the score is even. And we have the last end and I lose one point. And for me, it was like someone was killing me at that time. And it was the third lost final in three years in a row. It was one of the worst feelings that I had. And when I was going up on the podium, just as I got up, I looked around me and I saw that there were only three of us on the podium. And then I knew I cannot be sad. I must be happy and I must feel blessed because I could have been on the other side now and watching some other three guys on the podium. I just have to find a way to become better. And finally, win a final because there were three finals for me and where they were all lost. At that time, I was thinking about quitting Boccia after Beijing. That moment made me reconsider the whole situation. And I said, no, I'm not quitting. It sounds like you stepped back and looked at your position from a different probably more positive perspective. What were you saying to yourself at that moment? I must prove to myself that I can become better and that in the next final, I will win. And it eventually happened because next year, in 2009 European Championships, it was the first final that I won and the first gold medal. And then at the next Paralympic Games, uh, I won the gold medal. And then... Uh, uh, well, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, half of my medals are gold medals. So uh, I believe that that moment in Beijing was uh, the moment that made me much, much stronger. There'll be people listening to this who've had their own defeats to cope with, you know, either in sport or actually not to do with sport at all, their own disappointments in life. How do you bounce back from disappointment? Definitely. I don't believe that there is a person in the world that hasn't had uh, disappointments and failure. The important thing is how to overcome this. The most important is to find what was your mistake in order to, to become stronger and to not make the same mistakes that you have made in the past. On the other way, if you cannot find the mistake, then you just have to say that this is life. Everything can happen. And we just must go on and do the best again and again and again. And the failure will come as well as the achievement will come. Everything will come. This is life. But we must become stronger from each failure that we have in our life. And we must appreciate when we succeed. If we do not fail, then we cannot understand the meaning of success. Because when we success, in order to feel it, we must have felt the pain of the failure. Only then we can, we can see how important the success is. Does it make defeat easier or harder having your wife alongside you now or your dad in the early years? Does, does it help or, or hinder having somebody so close to you sort of sharing, 
sharing those those feelings of sadness? It's it's very difficult in both ways because the person that you're competing with has uh, spent and shared all the preparation and all the steps before the failure or the success. So uh, I believe that since you share everything, you will share that feelings too. Now with Katerina, it's just like uh, the other half of me. I know that uh, when we fail, she feels the same pain. I remember when we lost the final in uh, Rio 2016. We were like uh, crying all the morning on the next day. And then uh, suddenly I tell Katerina, but no, we must stop. We lost the game, but we won the silver medal. And this is huge. And I told Katerina, now let's go. We are in Rio de Janeiro and we have not gotten outside the Paralympic village at all. So we have to go somewhere and uh, enjoy ourselves. And Katerina was very, she took it very positive and she said, you are right. Let's go and have fun. You're in the perfect city to go and have fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> now, you proposed, didn't you? You proposed shortly after the Rio Paralympics. And I think it's fair to say us men are not tremendous at these kind of details and memories. So we decided to ask Katerina instead about <laughs> that proposal. Have a listen to this, Greg. Yeah. Well, I will never forget that day. It was our 10th monthly anniversary of our relationship. We still celebrate every single anniversary. And uh, Greg asked me to go out for dinner to the fancy roof garden that we first met. I was super excited to go back to that amazing place with my love and with all these memories that we have uh, from our first date. So we went there and we had an emotional dinner with a few of Athens by night. When we ordered uh, dessert, they asked us uh, if we wanted champagne. <laughs> and Greg said no. <laughs> Actually, he was stressed because he was ready to propose to me. <laughs> anyway, they served us some champagne with an amazing chocolate dessert. And when I realized that in the, bottom of, in the bottom of my glass was a ring, I was looking at him with tears in my eyes. Greg kissed me and told me, I want you forever, and after forever, I want you to be my wife. And that was the most amazing moment of my whole life, till our marriage. <laughs> wow. Was that better than any gold medal, Greg? Wow, well, it was, it was. That was a magnificent moment and uh, I have been never more anxious than uh, that day. Well, I had the ring on the wheelchair. I had, in some way, put it in the glass of champagne. So I went to the manager of the restaurant and uh, I told him so that the ring is there. Can you take it? Can you put it in the champagne? Uh, but uh, my anxiety was that bad that uh, when I returned, Katerina asked me who was that person. And the person was uh, about the age he could be my dad. But uh, I told her that he's my schoolmate. Okay. And when I said that, I said, okay, you're stupid. Do you know that you're stupid? <laughs> Thankfully, Katerina did not react. I believe if Katerina had asked my name, I would not say what to answer. So, yeah. <laughs> and then there's a moment that the waitress uh, wanted to bring the champagne with the ring inside. And uh, she asked me, do you want any champagne? And I say, no. And then I say to myself, okay, what are you saying? <laughs> Come back. Why is that no? Why? <laughs> <laughs> it was very funny. But in five minutes, uh, we both were crying for, because of our happiness. It was a spectacular moment in our life. It was great. Now, um, Katerina is not disabled. Um, I'm actually the same. I'm disabled and my wife isn't. Do you or Katerina ever get, well, let's say unusual or perhaps even hurtful reactions to your relationship? We get different reactions, but actually we, we don't care a lot about what people may think. Mostly, there are very, uh, very positive reactions because people, when see us together, they're very excited. And they're like, oh, wow, look at this couple. It's great. Some are feeling uh, pity for Katerina. Uh, sometimes they say stuff that, that we are laughing. 
what we try to explain is that when you love somebody, everything else uh, doesn't matter at all. We asked Katerina about this subject as well. Um, here's what she said. Actually, I have never seen Greg's disability as food for thought for our relationship or for our common life. I love his character, his unique personality, his uh, will for life and for success, and his dynamism. I fell in love with his personality from the first moment I met him and I talked with him. He's an amazing husband, he's my best friend, soulmate, and he's the only person in the whole world that I am with him 24-7, and I even miss him and want to spend even, even more time with him. Actually, I feel blessed to be his wife. So how can uh, his disability be an obstacle to this relationship? I never understood. Sure, I had racism and cynicism during our relationship, but uh, in the majority from older people. I don't really care for what other people say. So that's why nothing can ever stop me from my happiness with him. I also strongly believe that the Paralympic movement have helped so much the society not to see disabled people as different people. And I think that this year by year is getting better. And I'm really thankful to the Paralympic movement for all this positive influence to the society. Wow. How do you feel listening to that? Yeah, it's great. Well, Katerina talked about many issues. Uh, first of all, she is uh, absolutely right. We feel for each other great love that makes us uh, being like one. And uh, she is absolutely right. Even we, when we are in different rooms, we cannot uh, stay for a long time. So uh, either me or Katerina will shout, where are you? I'm missing you. So where are you? Come here. And, uh, yeah, she, she said just the, tru- the truth. Another issue about the Paralympic movement, which I also agree 100%, is that uh, the Paralympic movement have made the society not to pity the disabled anymore, but to feel that uh, they have capabilities. I will not spe- say special capabilities. It's not, they're not special for me, but they're capable. All of us that have a disability are capable to do great things in our life, to accomplish great things. The way to prove this is the Paralympic Games. I believe it's uh, one of the greatest tools that we have for the society to finally get rid of all the racism that we have and to make people understand that uh, we need respect and that in every other way, we're just normal people. Some can be good people, some can be bad people, some will achieve more things, some will achieve me less. But we are all normal people. How have you seen the Paralympics change since that debut 16 years ago? I've seen a change that uh, the Paralympic movement is much more famous now. I see that people are loving it every day more and more. And uh, what helps, I believe most of all, the social media helps a lot. because. the social media offer the opportunity to show to the whole society of every country what is a Paralympic sport, who are the athletes. We have the opportunity to meet the athletes, to meet their efforts and their successes and failures, and to share our way of life. And uh, this is something very good because uh, when people see this, they understand that this is something fabulous. And uh, I believe the society is loving the Paralympic movement. And that is what makes us stronger. On that, we, we talked about being inspirational. And I'm, I'm a cynical old boot, really. But you've certainly inspired me. It's been uh, absolutely fantastic speaking to you, Greg. And thank you so much for the time. Thank you very much. It was fantastic for me also speaking with you. I really hope that the Paralympic movement will touch the lives of many and will change it for the best. Because there are many opportunities that a person can have in their life. And uh, the only thing that a person should do is to take this opportunity and make the best of it. And then the happiness will come. Well, 
Well, I think I'm going to listen to that interview again whenever something goes not quite right in my own life. A really impressive, resilient and wise man, Greg Polychronidis. Please do rate, review and subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode and tell people what you've heard. Next week, we delve into the world of leadership and crisis management with Andrew Parsons, the president of the International Paralympic Committee. As shown in the Netflix film Rising Phoenix, Andrew played a key role in rescuing the Rio Paralympics and is now at the very top, trying desperately to keep the Tokyo Games on next year despite the coronavirus pandemic. Speak then. Speak then.